This recording is going to be on simple interest and it begins on page 3 of your notes. Notice we'll begin with an accumulation function uh, that's linear, mt plus b. So m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Um, to get the two parameters m and b, the accumulation of one dollar at time zero is just one, so we can plug that in, plug one, uh, zero in for t, and we see immediately that b, or the y-intercept, has to be 1. Um, at time 1, uh, we know that the accumulation of $1 needs to be 1 plus the effective interest over the first period, which is I1. So again, if we plug in 1 for time, we've already found that b is 1, then we set this equal to 1 plus the effective interest over the first year, and we see that m has to be i sub 1, or the effective interest rate over the first year. So therefore, our accumulation function of $1, when we're using a linear function, has to be 1 plus the effective interest rate over the first year times t. And that's called the simple interest accumulation function. So if we want to accumulate k dollars, then we would take k times 1 plus i1 times t. Um, a simple example, suppose A loans B sixteen hundred, then B will pay a two thousand will pay A two thousand dollars at the end of year four. To what rate of simple interest does this arrangement correspond? So we set up an equation of value. So sixteen hundred has to accumulate to two thousand dollars after four years. This would be the equation of value. And the left hand side is just 1600 times 1 plus i, the simple interest rate, times 4 years. And the right hand side is 2000. And then if we just solve that for i, then we will get a simple interest rate of 0 0.0625 or 6.25%. 6 so that would be an ant an annual simple interest rate. This also tells us that the first year effective rate is 6.25 percent. In example 5, we want to calculate the effective interest rate in years 1 and year 3. If we know that we're um, uh, using 5 percent simple interest. So the effective interest rate in year 1 by definition is the accumulation of one dollar at the end of one year minus the accumulation at time zero divided by the accumulation at time zero. So, the accumulation of one dollar at the end of one year using five percent simple interest is just a dollar and five cents. The accumulation at time zero is one. It's always one. And so we see we get exactly what we know we should get. The effective interest rate over the first year is the simple interest rate of five percent. However, if we calculate the effective interest rate in the third year, well, that's A3 minus A2 over A2. And again, we need to plug in to our accumulation. So that would be 5% times 3. Then I'll subtract A2. So that would be 1 plus 5% times 2 over 1 plus 5% times 2. You do that arithmetic, you get 0 0.05 over 1.1, which is 0 0.0425. So the effective interest rate in the third year has decreased to 4.25%. This is rather interesting property of simple interest. We can calculate it, the effective interest rate in the nth year using the same method. Um, we just use uh, n for time. So 1 plus i times n minus 1 plus i times n minus 1 over 1 plus i times n minus 1. And we can simplify the numerator and we get i over 1 plus i times n minus 1. So you might want to go through and make sure you see how to simplify the numerator. The numerator simplifies to just i. And notice that this is a decreasing function of n, the amount of time. 
because n appears only in the denominator. So as the n gets larger and larger, the fraction gets smaller and smaller. Now we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression. Since n only appears in the denominator, as n goes to infinity, the denominator gets larger and larger, and so this limit is equal to zero. So the effective interest rate using simple interest approaches zero as um, n approaches infinity. Okay, so what does this do? Going to page four, this introduces um, an inefficiency for simple interest. If it's used for more than a year, um, if it's used for more than a year, then we have this problem so that uh, the effective interest rate during the subsequent years uh, is decreasing, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And we're going to see how this um, inefficiency can be overcome later, but because of it, we're going to use simple interest for a period of times uh, less than a year. And we'll see why I'm using the word inefficiency in a few minutes. Now there are three methods of calculating simple interest. There's exact simple interest, where we use the actual number of days um, in the investment period, or the loan period, divided by the actual number of days in a year. And so that denominator could be 366 if we were in a leap year, but it's normally going to be 365. There's ordinary simple interest, where we assume 30 days in a month, 360 days in a year. And in that case, we're going to calculate the number of days using this uh, formula, using this formula here. Um, then there's banker's rule, and we're going to use the actual number of days invested or loaned, and we're going to assume 360 days in a year. Okay, so here is an example using the three different methods. Um, a borrows 5000 from B, so it's going to be a loan using simple interest. Um, the origination of the loan takes place October 14, 1998. We're going to use 8% simple interest, and A agrees to repay B, um, looks like May 7, 1999. So for a period of less than a year, again, if we use simple interest, a period of less than a year is desirable. We want to know what is the amount of repayment. So we need to calculate the amount that the 5,000 accumulates to using each of the three methods. If we use actual, actual, we need to count the actual number of days. And this table here helps us count the actual number of days. In October, the loan started October 14th. There are 31 days in October. So that means we have 17 days in October that the loan is in effect. And then we just continue with the number of days in each month where the loan is in effect. So 30 days in November, 31 December, 31 January. Um, we're assuming this is not going to be a leap year, 28 in February. And uh, in the end, we have, what, 7 in May. So if we add all of those up, I get 205 actual days that the loan is in effect from October 14, 1998 to May 7, 1999. Um, so if we want to calculate the actual uh, um, exact simple interest, then we would use the actual actual amounts. So I have 5,000 times 1 plus 8 percent times 205 over 365. That's the portion of the year or the time that the fraction of the time that the loan has been effect using exact numbers of days for numerator and denominator. And this turns out to be, what, 5,224.66. So that loan has accumulated to that much. That's how much should be repaid. Now, if we're going to use the ordinary simple interest, I need to know the 3360 day count. So I'm going to use my formula. 
Um, now, in using this formula, I need the year, month, and day at the beginning and end. So at the end, I have um, year 99, month 5, day 7. And in the beginning, I have year 98, um, month 10, day 14. So I'm just going to plug into my formula. I have a 360 times my ending month minus my beginning month plus 30, because I'm assuming 30 days in a month, my ending month minus my beginning month plus the ending day minus my beginning day. So that's what I get when I plug into the formula for ordinary simple interest in counting days. And this is 203. So in ordinary simple interest, I'm going to use 203 days as the number of days alone was effective. And the denominator is going to be 360 because I'm assuming 360 days in a year. So I do this arithmetic. I get 5,225.56. That's how much we would repay that would be repaid if we were using ordinary simple interest calculation to calculate the value of the loan. Now banker's rule, we're going to use the actual number of days in the numerator, so that will be 205 in the numerator. And we're going to use uh, 360 days in a year. So we use 360 for the denominator as the actual 360 rule, and that gives us 5,227.78. Notice that that gave us um, the, the most uh, that had to be paid back in this case. Okay, so that's just an example of how to use the three different rules, the exact simple interest, ordinary simple interest, and banker's rule. Um, what strategy should one use if simple interest is used for investment purposes for more than a year? So if we think about it, what investment strategy would you use? The effective rate goes down each year after the first year. So if we wanted to maximize the value of our investment, we would what we would withdraw the um, at the end of each year, we would withdraw our money and reinvest it so that we would get we would get the effective we would maximize the effective interest rate by withdrawing it and reinvesting it. Therefore, it wouldn't decrease each year. And this is why I use the word inefficiency above. This would be a very inefficient system if we all had to go and withdraw our investments at the end of the year and reinvest it. Um, therefore, uh, simple interest doesn't really make a lot of sense using it for more than uh, one year period of time. However, for problems, we can use simple interest for any length of time, and you'll see in actuarial exam type problems and in our financial math problems that um, we, uh, we will uh, be asked to use simple interest for uh, arbitrary amounts of time, whether they be uh, greater than a year or less than a year. But in actual practice, um, it's used for period of, periods of time of uh, less than a year. Okay, so let's look at example seven. Let's say x is invested at time zero and will accumulate to a thousand at time ten using simple interest. So we set up that equation of value. X is invested at time zero and it will accumulate. I'll use R for the annual simple interest rate. It will accumulate to a thousand the end of year 10. So this would be the equation of value. On the left side we have the simple interest accumulation function. On the right side we have how much it accumulates to. Um, 2x invested at time zero will accumulate to 700 in three years using simple interest. Okay, So in three years 
This would be the accumulation function using simple interest. And it accumulates to 700. Notice we don't know the simple interest rate, um, R. And also we're being asked to find x, the amount invested at time 0. So we have two equations and two unknowns, but they're nonlinear equations. And one technique that we often use when we have nonlinear equations, when we have a product of the two variables or expressions where the two variables are present, is we will take ratios. So for example, if we take the ratio of the two left sides of the equation, my x's will cancel and I will get 1 plus r times 10 over 2 times 1 plus r times 3. And the x's have canceled. Well, if I take the ratio of the left-hand sides, that will be equal to taking the ratio of the right-hand sides, which is 10 sevenths, by the way. Now I have one unknown r. The x is canceled. You can algebraically solve by r by multiplying both sides by what's in the denominator here. And I'm not going to go through the arithmetic. You can do that. You can go through the arithmetic now and you can isolate r on one side and you'll find that r is equal to 13 tenths. And then, since we're asked to find x, you can plug r equal to 13 tenths in one of the two equations. It doesn't matter which one. So if we use the top equation, I get x is equal to 1 plus 13 tenths times 10, or excuse me, x times 1 plus 13 tenths times 10 is equal to 1,000. And you can then solve for x, and when you solve for x, uh, you'll get 71.43. Again, I'll let you go through the arithmetic. Make sure you can solve that. But we're just using equation 1 above. Uh, and plugging in the value that we got for r. Okay, so this is um, the introduction to simple interest. Um, we, we've seen an important uh, characteristic of it. The effective interest rate decreases if we use simple interest for more than a year, from, from each year to year. Uh, the effective interest rate during those years gets smaller and smaller. This leads to an inefficiency in investment and loans um, where we would want to try to settle our investments at the end of each year. And so as a practical matter, we normally only use simple interest uh, for a term of less than a year. We have three ways of calculating those accumulated values or loan values, exact, ordinary, and banker's rule. But for the... Um, purposes of problems, um, financial math problems, we can use any time period. So we will use, and you will see, uh, problems where we use simple interest for greater than one year, just for the sake of, of calculating problems.